we're going to be talking about right angle trigonometry. Now first trigonometry, that means triangles. We're going to be working with different things with triangles, although later we're going to see they can be inscribed in circles. Turns out that's still okay. But uh, we're mainly concerned with triangles. And what does it mean to be a right angle? I thought maybe that's a good place to start. Just to remind you, a right angle is something like this right here. We normally write it with this little symbol like this right here. What we mean is that one angle, maybe I'll write it like this, one angle is 90 degrees. So it's a square, it's nice and square like this. Now we have something called obtuse angle. And by the way, unknown angles, we often call angles theta. We use this Greek letter theta like this. Okay, so it looks like an O with a little line across. So obtuse angle, what does it mean to be obtuse? That's when your angle is greater than 90 degrees. So for example, something like, uh, let me draw you an obtuse angle, maybe something like this, like that. This angle right here, theta, is greater than 90 degrees. And then we have something called an acute angle, so that's when theta is less than 90 degrees. So that would be a small one like, um, I don't know, let me draw an acute angle, maybe like this, something like that. This is my theta here. Okay, so this, my theta here is less than 90 degrees. Remember, because 90 degrees is sticking up like this. See, here's 90 degrees. So there you go, it's greater than 90. Here it's less than 90. Okay, uh, by the way, that's why they have this one here. It's acute angle, but actually it's not. This is actually wrong. Look, this is actually a right angle. It's not an acute angle. If it was an acute angle, it would be less. So uh, let's review uh, Pythagoras theorem. You should have learned this before. And in case you haven't seen it before, well, I did another video, and if you're watching these in order, you'll see it. But otherwise, let me just remind you. This right here, we normally call the high, uh, this right here, sorry, is the right angle. Opposite to the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. I'm going to write it like this, hypotenuse. That's the name of it. Now, we normally give it a letter C. These two other sides can be whatever they want. We normally call them A and B. And we have this thing that tells us that if we need to, we can actually find it. We can say c squared equals a squared plus b squared. This is just a revision, just to make sure you remember. There we go, so that was Pythagoras' theorem. It basically helps you if you know two of the sides and you want the other side, well, rearrange as needed. Now, the a's and b's don't matter. You can see they're interchangeable, but the c is important. That one has to be by itself. That's the hypotenuse. So... Let's keep going. Now let's do some real stuff here. We're going to do um, some trigonometric ratios. We've got something called sine, cosine, and tangent. And we often call them just sine, like for short we say sin. And we have to have of an angle, okay? So we have to have like sine theta. We have cos of theta, because cos by itself doesn't mean anything. But cosine of theta, we have something called tangent of theta. Remember theta is some angle. So I want to give you a little trick here. You might have heard of this, Sokatoa. Some people have heard of it. Depending on where you're from, maybe you've never heard this trick. I know in Denmark, they don't tend to teach this trick because it doesn't, well, it's kind of silly. But I learned this when I was in high school, and I thought I would teach you this way. So first of all, I think it's really important to name the sides based on the angle you're looking at. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to have my theta be here, and this angle, I'm going to have this theta be here. Okay, so here I'm going to have theta up here. This is still a right angle here, so is this. So it's still right angle trigonometry, because one of the angles is 90 degrees. Now if we're going to call these different things, we normally call these hypotenuse. Remember, that's always the one that's the longest. And the way I remember the hypotenuse, it's always opposite to the 90 degree. So this is going to be called hype. Now I'm going to call it hype for short. Hope you're okay with that, because that's hype instead of hypotenuse. Now, when I say name the sides, I mean you have to name either hypotenuse. We're going to have a little trick. We're going to call one adjacent, which actually means beside. Or we're going to have opposite. Okay, we're going to have these three different names. So I'm going to call this one hype for short. I'm going to call this one ADJ for adjacent. I'm going to call this one op for opposite. Okay? Just because it's annoying to write them all. So this is the hypotenuse. Now, if you're this angle, opposite to you then, this must be opposite. That must be that one. And then therefore, by process of elimination, this one must be adjacent. Now, adjacent means beside. So you might think, well, according to this one, though, this is beside it, so is this. Yeah, but this one's the hypotenuse. So that's another way of thinking about it. So 
You can use process of elimination to figure it out, but opposite to your angle is always the opposite. It's called opposite for a reason. Now watch carefully. What if same triangle idea, except now I named this one right here. Well, this is still the hype, iPod news, but watch carefully. This one now becomes opposite, doesn't it? And therefore, this one must be adjacent. So just trying to show you that depending on where you put your angle, you may have to name these different sides differently. So adjacent, hypotenuse, and uh, adjacent, uh, opposite. Now if we look at this one right here, we've got a little dumb trick. It's called Sokatoa. That's why I wrote it down like this. What does so actually mean? So what that means is you do, I'm about to do a different letter here. I'll say like this. What this means is that sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. See, watch, I say S equals O over H. See, that's why I do S, O, H. Do you notice that's where those are? Look, it's S, O, H. So it's like saying, you know, S equals O over H. That's kind of the way to think about it. Whoops, my writing is just really bad here. But it's S equals O over H. So sort of sine, S stands for sine, right? Equals opposite over hypotenuse. That's sort of how you can remember it. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but sine of theta, of course. Well, then by the same way of thinking, we could say that the cosine must be adjacent over hypotenuse. And we're going to have that the tangent is O over A. That's why we named them H, A, and O, because now we have those letters here. So to show you then how it would work, let me just uh, write it out a little bit more clearly. So that means ka, that sounds like the sound of a bird or something. But that means cos theta, this is what it really means. Cos theta, that's the C, equals A over H. And A is adjacent, H is hypotenuse. And by the same way, we could say then that um, we have tangent, that's what the T stands for. So tan theta must be equal to and let's see now, it's OA, so that means it must be opposite over adjacent. Oops. So that's the that's sort of a nice little trick for remembering how these work. I don't know if that helps you. I know that since I learned this in high school, I've always used this. I found this was actually really helpful. So if you've never heard of this before, maybe this helps you. If you have heard of it, well then, sorry, I just reminded you of it. There you go. Let's actually do an example. I like this. It feels so right. Get it? Because it's at right angle. <laughs> you can actually use Pythagoras to make sure this works. 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. And the square root of that is 5. So yay. Let's think of this example here. So first of all, diagrams. This is a really important pro tip actually for the rest of this unit is that don't trust diagrams, okay? Trust the numbers they put, yes, but don't try to sit there and measure it unless it's a scale diagram and you get to use a protractor, right? That's a device to measure angles. So almost never assume that it's to scale and watch out for your calculator mode. In other words, on your calculator, there's different modes that you can use. There's something, let's see, on mine, for example, it says rad here, that means radian, and I can click on it and make it degree. On your different calculator, depending on what you use, like the TI-84, there's a little mode button, but double check the mode, because that's really important. You often want degrees, at least in these kind of triangles, degrees are relevant here. Depending on which math course you take, you may need to be switching to radians. It's gonna depend on which one you do. So let's look at this, solving for x. Hmm, we have an x here, we have this angle right here. Let's start by doing what I just said. Let's name the sides, then we'll use Sokotoa. So I'll name the sides. What are they called? Well, they're not like Bob and whatever, but let's see. So which one is the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is always opposite to the 90 degrees, so this must be hype. And this is my angle theta, so this then must therefore be opposite. And if that's opposite, this one then must be adjacent. Now this makes it really easy to figure out what to do. I got to use so, ka, or toa, depending on what I have. What I like to do is try to think, what do I want to ignore? Look, I don't know adjacent. I don't know that number, so I'm going to try to have something that avoids an A. Does so, ka, or toa, which of these, so, ka, or toa, which one doesn't have an A? Do you notice then? That's how I can, by process of elimination, figure out what to do. That one has an A, so I won't use it because I don't know it. That one has an A, I won't use it. Therefore, I must use so 
In other words, what does that mean? It means sine of theta, just to write it out, sine of theta equals opposite over adjacent. In this case, then, let's, let's write it out properly now. So let's see, that means that sine of 20 degrees, that equals opposite, which is x, over adjacent, which is 6. If I want to get x by itself, I just rearrange, I multiply both sides by 6, that pushes it up here, and I'm just going to reverse the sides here, so I'm going to say that x equals, let's see, it's 6 times sine of 20 degrees. This is what I'm going to do. If I'm not allowed a calculator, this is my answer. If I am allowed a calculator, let's do it. i got to make sure I'm in degree mode, because I'm doing things in degrees. I just want 6 times sine of 20. So 6 times sine of 20. Boom. I'm going to do it to three significant figures, so 2.05. So I'll say so x is approximately equal to 2.05. There we go, I'm done. So do you see that wasn't so bad, I hope? Let's do some more examples just to play around with these here. So I got a few more. So solve for x. This time, different triangle. Let's name the sides. Same idea here. So which one is the hypotenuse? It's always opposite to the 90, so that must be hype. Opposite to the angle must be this one. Therefore, this one must be adjacent. All right. Um, let's take a look. Which one do I want to avoid? Well, I want to avoid opposite because I don't know it. And let's think of so, ka, or toa, which of these should I use? Well, I can figure out which of these shouldn't I use because I want to have the one that doesn't have an O in it. So don't do that one, don't do that one. Must be that one. All right, so I'll do it. So ka, what does that mean? That means cos of theta must be A, which is adjacent, over hypotenuse. That's the whole reason of soca toa, right? So let's do that, put in the numbers now. That means I have cosine of 30 degrees in this case cos 30, equals, uh, let's see, adjacent to it, so, oh, that's 2, divide that by um, the hypotenuse, which is x. Now, if I want to get x by itself, let's see, I'll put the x up here, and I'll divide the cos 30 on the bottom. So I'll have x equals, let's see, it'll be 2 over cos 30. I've done both steps in one. If you need to, just do it step by step, right? x up here, and after that, you want to divide by that. So I'll have this. Let's do that on the calculator. So I get a pretty fraction here, which is that button there. And I say 2 over cos of 30. I'm still in degree mode, which is good. And I have 2.309. But to three significant figures, it'll be 2.31. So I'll say, all right, so x is approximately equal to 2.31. Yay. Let's make my three look a little bit nicer. So that one's done. See, it wasn't so bad. We keep going. So we want to solve for angle theta this time. So let's see what we do here. So same idea, name the sides. So opposite to uh, this one right here is op. Opposite to the 90 degrees is hype, uh, hypotenuse there. And this one then must be adjacent. All right. I don't want anything that has hypotenuse in it. That means if I'm looking at so, or ka, or toa, I want to avoid so and ka because they both have h's in it. Therefore, I must use toa. What does that mean to do? Again, that means I do tan theta. And generally, this is tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Now keep in mind when you've done this a lot, you're going to get faster at doing it and you'll skip some steps. That's great. I just want to show you how I would set it up here. So in this case, then let me put in the numbers. So that means tan of theta. Oops, I don't know what theta is. That's going to be equal to, let's see, the opposite to it, which is 3 over 4, which is the adjacent. Here's the problem then. How do I get theta by itself? You might think, oh, I just divide by 10, right? You can't divide by tan. Tan doesn't exist by itself. It has to be tangent of something. So how do you undo tan? This is where that pro tip comes in. I don't know if you remember this from math before, but uh, you should have seen this a few years ago. We do something called inverse. So if you want to undo a tan, you do inverse tan. That's the key part here. So in this case right here, to get theta by itself then, because I do want theta by itself, it's going to be what's called the inverse tan of that thing, so 3 fourths. 
that tells me basically what number, when I take the tangent of it, gives me 3 fourths. That's what this inverse tan does. And let me show you that on the calculator. So I've got a little button for inverse tan as well. Look, when I go trig, notice i got sine cos tan. Well, I've also got inverses. So I'm going to do inverse tan of, pretty fraction here, 3 over 4. Boom, I get 36 point, up to three significant figures, it'll be 9, so 36.9. So theta is approximately equal to 36.9 degrees. And yay, I've done that one. So that's how we can deal with right angle trigonometry. Now you might be wondering, oh, why should you care? Well, this is useful for triangulation. We use the word try for a reason, right? Triangles. We use this to tell your location. This is useful, uh, well, if you've ever used a cell phone before, a mobile phone, this is how you triangulate your location. It turns out by different angles, you can figure that out. In fact, your phone is really clever, it does that. He also uses triangulation with uh, GPS, because you're using some satellites way up in space, but you're actually using triangulation. Well, you don't, your phone does, but there you go. Map making is useful for that, construction. For example, I had a student uh, a few years ago. He was really crazy into uh, climbing, and he really hated math. It was a perfect example. He wanted to make himself a climbing wall. It's really cool. So he wanted to make himself a wall that was um, overhanging, it's called. So he wanted to make himself some sort of wall here where he could actually climb like this. So he'd be, you know, really challenging himself here. Here's him sort of, you know, sticking to the wall here, sort of like this. He wanted to be climbing like this. He wanted to build this at home. And to do that, well, he had a you know, square wall like this. He was trying to figure out, how do I do this? And I was like, ah, perfect example to use trigonometry to figure out what angles he needed. How long did this need to be? He had to use Pythagoras. It was a perfect reason. So it's just one example. So trigonometry, yes, very important. You use it a lot.